Hello everyone, welcome back to the Matt Video Productions channel. I'm super excited for today's video because I basically combined five video ideas into one video. So this is like a week's worth of content in one video basically. Today we're going to be looking at five separate useful and interesting prompt strategies for text to image generators that you know, I've discovered, viewers have discovered, and I think stuff like this is the reason why text to image generation is such a powerful tool and is really going to shape the future of media. Since I always open up with an interesting generation, I figured I'd open up with a few interesting generations from my Discord channel. If you don't know, you can join this down in the description below. There will be an invite link. You can chat with me and other viewers. You can always see when I post new updates or videos. You can suggest video ideas and actually put in prompts to get generated by Dolly to our other text to image generators and the prompts suggestion channel. And of course you can actually post real AI generations like this guy posted Homer Simpson got shocked by the crash of Bitcoin in 3D. It's kind of funny. We've also got ET phoning home. He's definitely making a call. As you can see, people have been comparing prompts between Midjourney and Dolly 2. So this was KFC Toilet generated in Midjourney, and this was KFC Toilet in Dolly 2, and it's really just the KFC logo on a wall for some reason. And oh the god, the KFC the KFC toilet went way too far. Anyways, yeah, lots of cool stuff going on in this Discord, so make sure you join it. Now, for those of you who want access to Midjourney, the in my opinion at least second best text to image generator that you can actually use behind Dolly, basically I I have a bunch of mid-journey invites this is invite only in their discord channel and i am going to be giving three away in this video all you have to do is leave a comment down below basically saying what you want to generate uh, with text to image ai it could be any prompt pretty much that you want but i just want to see your favorite prompt that you want to see generated and i would also appreciate if you like the video and subscribe to the channel and also join the discord channel because that is how i'm going to be giving out these mid-journey invites you need a discord anyways to join the mid journey discord where you generate all of these amazing images later this week i'm actually going to be giving out about 10 mid journey invites in a live stream probably on thursday so this thursday and that is going to be really fun a lot of you guys in real time while you're watching the live stream will get access to mid journey and be able to uh, test it out and use it to make some interesting generations like you see on the screen right now now one really interesting thing about mid journey is that there are actually limited commercial terms for this so you can actually use mid journey generations to make money in a way it's still very limited but unlike dolly 2 you can actually generate some like more horror stuff so a little bit more like weapon things of that nature and you can also use it limited to make money I think if you pay for the plan so yeah keep that in mind and let me know what you think about the whole dolly 2 not being able to use it for commercial use and not really being able to generate anything that's not g-rated with dolly 2 because it really is a topic of discussion as of late anyways viewers now time for the main course so starting out with our first prompt strategy now the reason that this is the first one is not because it's you know the most interesting even in the slightest but it is definitely probably the most helpful thing uh, to know when trying to generate with a text to image generator long and detailed prompts are key so if i wanted to see let's say a cat wearing a sombrero riding on top of a donkey in the middle of the desert this is already you know a decently uh thick prompt but the text to image generator doesn't know whether this is going to be a photo or a drawing or an oil painting. You need to get detailed with it. So in this specific case, let's say I want a vintage photo. So I can put that at the end of the prompt. Photo taken on, I can even say a specific camera, a Pentax K1000. We can even specify what kind of cat this is, what kind of donkey. And we say that he's wearing a sombrero, but where is he wearing the sombrero and how? Because, you know, specifics like that can sometimes trip up text to image generators, especially ones that aren't necessarily as advanced as Dolly 2. So I've changed this to a cat with a sombrero on his head, comma. Sometimes I like to put commas in there just to break things up. I'm not exactly sure how this affects every different text to image generator. It can really honestly depend. Like Mid Journey, I know, uh, actually takes into account different commas, but we have no information on Dolly 2 and how it takes in commas. But since commas are used in natural language, it's important probably to include them in most text to image generators, including context words such as who, might increase our chances of getting a good generation out of our prompt. 
The more detailed, easier the image is to picture in your head probably means the better image you're going to get out of the text to image generator. A cat with a sombrero on his head who is riding on top of a donkey, period. Sometimes you can even put periods in the middle of your prompts to break up the sentence even more. I know, again, Midjourney definitely will take a period into account, but I'm not sure about Dolly 2 or other text to image generators. But saying it again, the more natural the language sort of flows, so to speak, uh, sometimes the better the prompt comes. So this is a nice, juicy, detailed prompt. And we will see how good Dolly 2 makes this prompt. Not the best example, I guess, but we actually did get a few decent generations, even though they're not real photos. It did actually apply sort of like the vintage aspect of the uh, photo taken on a Pentax K1000, which is very interesting, but this is a cat wa wearing sombrero riding on a donkey. This one could just be a close-up photo. Definitely looks like it's taken on a Pentax K1000. Let's try to rearrange this part to the front because I've noticed oftentimes the closer that words are to the beginning of the prompt, the more likely that the AI will actually pick up that that's what you want. And we're actually going to delete the taken on a Pentax K1000. I feel like that might be messing with the AI a little bit. We'll just say photo of a cat with a sombrero on his head who is riding on top of the donkey. They are in the middle of the Sahara Desert. We'll see if we get a better generation like that. I've also noticed that in general with text to image AIs, they kind of don't give you exactly what you want if you're not detailed enough and if your prompt has a lot of stuff in it it's kind of hard to get what you want but there we go now we actually got a good generation this one's hilarious it still sometimes gets stuff confused right so this is a cat riding on top of the cat and the Sahara Desert, he is wearing a sombrero this is still really funny though and yeah I mean they're, they're definitely coming out better this is pretty good for Dolly too. This is a complex prompt. It's not an easy prompt. It really all is in crafting the correct prompt. We did a tiny tweak there and we got completely different imagery. So taking what we know from designing prompts, let's say we want to design a like simple, like minimalist game controller. So this is the basic prompt that we start out with, right? Simple minimalist game controller. We'll generate that and see what we get. And then we'll move into number two and get closer what we actually want. Now this is pretty cool for just like simple little logos these are actually really nice so number two is applying descriptors such as maybe the controller is designed by apple because they you know sort of follow the simple minimalist sort of style i guess if that makes any sense but if we say designed by apple the ai might get confused with apple the fruit and give you like an apple fruit controller which might be kind of interesting but that's not what we're looking for right so we'll say designed by apple ink or you could always put the names of artists who make minimalist art and by the way we don't have to put in one of these we can actually put in more if we want as well i really don't know many uh minimalist companies well we have uh this random minimalist uh designer but i don't know if it's good to include designers because that's not really that close to game controller but it might work We'll just say in other minimalist companies. Again, this second prompt here and other minimalist companies is going to help the AI know that we're talking about Apple Inc. the company, which could actually prove to be beneficial in getting what we want. Again, we're gonna take what we learned in the first tip here and we're gonna say a product photo. And I'm also gonna throw the word concept in there because sometimes it can give us a little shakeup of the randomness. Product photo concept for a simple minimalist game controller designed by Apple Inc. and other companies. And there we go. That's actually pretty close to what we're looking for. This one's got like some really interesting colors. I feel like if Apple had to put colors into their game controller, it would be something like this where they'd use like not actual like normal, you know, game controller colors. Yeah, these are actually really cool results, really cool designs. They're definitely minimalist, definitely more Apple. We're getting that sort of silvery white color that Apple uses quite a lot on a lot of their products. And uh, yeah, they're definitely more like a product photo, so pretty cool. Number two was to add the names of either artists or companies and uh, make sure that the AI knows what we're talking about when we mean Apple Inc. Because otherwise it's going to think it's designed by an Apple. And if you're wondering what a uh, game controller designed by an Apple would look like, uh, I guess it would look something like this. I don't know. This could actually be a pretty good advertisement for Apple's new video game controller. They haven't really used the Apple branding in a long time. Maybe the AI is on to something. All right, anyways, folks, moving on to number three. Something you might actually not know about is that these AIs are incredible at designing logos. This sort of falls more into the idea category rather than a useful prompt designing tip. But I found out that these AIs, these text image AIs, are so good at doing this specific task 
that I mean you can take almost any prompt and just convert it into a logo logo design concept we'll see if this just straight up gives us a logo for exactly the last prompt that we were doing which is you know completely out of the realm of a logo if uh, you guys would agree with me on that one and yeah there you go immediately changes the whole thing into a logo that's like Apple related like this is actually a really good uh, logo design for a game controller that's I guess designed by an Apple we got the stem coming out and then it's red like an Apple and sort of shaped like a controller but an Apple at the same time so yeah I mean it's just really shockingly good at uh, logos even mid journey mid journey is again the second best below dolly too but mid journey is also really good at logos in fact it made the logo for my youtube channel and uh, i don't even know how many of you guys picked up on that but yeah that is ai generated by mid journey not even dolly 2 logo design concept for a dating site for dinosaurs and there you go the dinosaurs are ready to uh have a lovely time and go out on dates with each other i think you could literally use almost all of these as like a base at least to create this sort of dinosaur dating website right logo design concept for a sewer monster and there we go, we have more logo designs for, I guess, like a sewer monster. I want to try uh, Walter White's Twitch channel. Basically, if you ever need a logo again, at least to just get ideas for some something you have, maybe an Instagram account, Twitch account, whatever it is, Dolly2 has got you for at least a base idea, right? Here, Walter White's uh, Twitch channel. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. I like that. I just had a random idea I really want to try. Darth Vader's latest Instagram post. This is just like memes of Darth Vader using a phone for Instagram. Uh, pretty funny though, I, I guess. Dolly 2, by the way, is actually trained on a lot of memes, uh, turns out. Anyways, one thing that a lot of people seem to overlook when it comes text-to-image generation, and I haven't seen any other text-to-image generator, not even Google's Party or Imogen, uh, really show off, is the ability to use Dolly 2 like a Photoshop, or use text-to-image generation like Photoshop, being able to edit different photos, which of course is a built-in feature of uh, Dolly 2. So we can take this image that we generated and we can click the edit button. Now I can sort of highlight whatever I want here and uh, erase it and let the AI fill it in for us. So I'm going to erase this phone here real quick and we'll say Darth Vader holding a banana and we can immediately change this image into something entirely different and that is our fourth one for today in painting and i guess quote unquote out painting but yeah it gives us a bunch of variations here and we can sort of try and see which ones we like obviously a lot of these didn't end up working a lot of times it really just tries to fill in the empty space but yeah this one actually did give us a nice uh, image of darth vader holding a banana and of course you can upload your own photos and this is what i'm saying a lot of people seem to neglect this, but you can use it like Photoshop or an alternative to Photoshop, sort of edit your own photos. Again, you're not allowed to upload anything photorealistic, no photorealistic people, nothing like that. To sort of get at the idea that I'm trying to talk about here, we're going to use this image of me holding a lemon. I actually put this on my community tab. I use my community tab on my YouTube channel quite a lot. A lot of people are probably really confused by this uh, post of the lemon, but yeah, it's here for the video today. So this image of a lemon does actually have like, my hand in it and open AI might actually spot that as like a human generation and get mad at me but we will do our best here to demonstrate what we're, we're trying to show anyways okay so we got the picture of our lemon so I'm gonna zoom in pretty close so it can't really see most of my hand again I don't want open AI to try to ban me all right let's uh Photoshop this image so to speak so we will take this and we'll type out a prompt for it photo of a cool lemon character Wearing sunglasses and smiling with perfect bright white teeth. And we will sort of erase the uh, parts of the image that it needs to really fill in. Where the eyes would be and everything. We always want to try to make sure to erase a decent amount so they just got something to work with, right? And uh, we will give this Photoshop a shot. And as you can see, it actually worked pretty well in this case. Uh, we got definitely a lemon with smiling teeth. This one is definitely easily my favorite out of all of these, but uh, yeah, you can basically use this as Photoshop and completely edit your photos and make really cool stuff. Well, now the uh, image is posted onto my community tab and it has been done.
Anyways, everyone, moving on to our final sort of tip. It also actually involves imp painting, which again is only available with Dolly 2 right now. But you can actually use Dolly 2 to complete unfinished art. This might be particularly useful for artists that are struggling with one little piece of art. Maybe they can't draw that hand right or they can't get the face completely perfect on whatever character they're drawing, something like that. They could just plop it into Dolly 2 and get some sort of a result with in painting and then if that's good enough they can sort of sketch and trace off of that and work off of that uh, piece. I would also like to mention that this specific idea of using Dolly 2 to complete the art that you are sort of having trouble with or just to sort of see what it gets because it's pretty interesting uh, was suggested by a YouTube viewer of the channel so I'll link down below and, you know give credit where credits due this was his idea not mine and he makes uh, Terraria content and he's also making a video game so go check him out because he also suggested a few other video ideas that were also interesting and might end up being complete videos on the channel in the future so I've actually got a few examples of uh, cubes or cubs art that he sent to me and then I used Dolly 2 to try to complete. So this was the base image here. So obviously two people overlooking some mountains having like a picnic. And here is how Dolly 2 changed the image uh, to sort of complete the art. I don't remember exactly what the prompt was. It was something like digital art of two people having a picnic overlooking the mountains. And it actually did a pretty good job at uh, sort of copying the art style of the mountains and everything. It's a little not very detailed, but nonetheless, it did an all right job. Yeah, you can see sort of how Dolly 2 can be used to complete art. So this next attempt was simply just to transform this hand piece and uh, sort of see what it gets. So the hand hand was erased from the image and then I attempted to use Dolly 2 to complete uh, this and I think I used something like digital art self-portrait and it actually in every single generation changed it so that the person drawn in the self-portrait was holding their phone. I guess the body language in the art just assumed that the the person depicted was just holding their phone. Every single generation, that was never specified, it just said like self-portrait or something like that. Every single generation was like this, holding a phone. And you know, it copied the art style pretty decently, I think, and it even tried to complete the uh, signature here. So yeah, I think Dolly honestly did a pretty decent job at completing the art, so to speak. And I went a little bit more detailed as well and tried to complete the original image by making it bubble tea that was being held in the hand just like the original uh, art piece. And I think Dolly 2 did a pretty good job at this as well. Although it's a little small, but that's probably due to the small size of the area that I sort of erased for the in painting. So in this final set of images, the goal was to sort of fill in the body of this uh, image of this girl. And the prompt that I put in was actually something like image of a girl digital art Art, something like that and it actually put a separate image of a separate girl down here trying to maybe follow the art style a little bit but yeah it basically drew an extra girl like right under her which was kind of uh, funny to see uh, so instead I just said like digital art pair of legs and then we actually started to get real completions of the generation. It actually did a really quite a quite a good job here, especially with the top two ones right here. It followed the art style correctly and the colors correctly and completed the rest of the dress actually in a really nice way over here. So in the end, actually, it did a pretty good job at finishing up the art. And uh, yeah, Dolly 2 is basically a really powerful tool for artists when it comes to, uh, you know, formulating maybe the rest of their idea for their art or if they can't, you know, quite get something right. But uh, yeah, this basically proves it. It can be used to do some pretty cool stuff. Anyways, folks, that's going to be it for me for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I greatly appreciate all of the viewers, all of the subscribers, everyone who leaves likes and joins the Discord. And uh, yeah, check out some of my other videos that I'll have linked down below in the description. And um, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.